So what is survival, kids? Where can they be? We gotta find them. Find what? <gasps> Einstein here lost the kids. I lost the kids? She? What the hell? Oh my god, no way. The Game Boy Color is so much more than it appears to be. Yes, it added color to the great brick, but with it came more advanced games with expanded graphics, sounds, and even borders on the Super Game Boy. That's neato. But all it is combined to give the games exclusive to Game Boy Color that extra edge of being fun and advanced from the base model. Most games from this age are memorable in their own right, but what would you think? If I said one of the first survival games was released on this era, and it's rarely remembered? Survival Kids was released for the Game Boy Color in 1999 by Castlevania dealer Konami. The predecessor to the later release Lost in Blue games on Nintendo DS and Wii, Survival Kids isn't about slaying some evil villain, instead purely focusing on what's in the title, Survival. Oh, and figuring out what the mysteries are on the island you watch up on, but eh, that can wait. First off, you get a choice between a girl and a boy, and start your story riding with your irresponsible father on the high seas by yourselves. One oopsie daisy later, and you wash up on an island with nothing, and are given the task to just survive, day to day, with the game continuously advancing in time as you walk. You can find food and material lying on the ground, while also being able to scavenge for shipwrecked goods to help you in your way, including a canteen, a bag, and even a knife. All of these are used to keep your kid alive from the various dangers of being unsupervised on a desert island, including starvation, exhaustion, and various animals that will attack you. This game is oddly immersive for a late 90s Game Boy Color game. Their survival aspect and daily management of your character's hunger, thirst, and sleep really help you put yourself in the game and figure out how to stay alive. While you can just scavenge for your needs, just know that not everything you find will be useful. On the contrary, you can find various berries and mushrooms that will do the opposite and poison the kid you're controlling, losing health with every step due to the tummy ache. This is where the game's next aspect comes in, being able to combine materials to create tools. Tools help make living on the island even more bearable, whether it's combining fishing line and a stick to make a fishing pole for food, or a stick and matchwood for tinder to create fires. Every new thing you find helps make life a little bit easier. These tools can also help you navigate through the island, where you can discover more mysteries as well as possible allies. This game isn't strictly surrounded around survival. There is a plot that exists. On certain days, events will transpire that will require the player to make decisions and react accordingly or possibly face a conclusive finish. There are multiple endings that can be triggered which the game keeps track of, including some that can end the game with the kid even dying. You're encouraged to replay over and over again to figure out how to continue on and unlock the other endings, which will lead you to figure out more and more secrets of the mysterious island you are on. Getting some of these endings will be more frustrating than satisfying, as the game will require you to make certain choices that aren't immediately apparent if you aren't following a guide. While some of this can be explained away with the limitations of the Game Boy Color hardware, it doesn't fully eliminate how more annoying it can be, especially for people who thought survival was the hooking point. Beyond that, the game is an experience that should be more popular than it actually is. It received the Japan-only sequel in 2000, and was eventually spun off into the previously mentioned Lost in Blue franchise, but this original game should definitely be played if you can find it in any form. This game gets 4 lost kids out of 5.